Siren Radio. Happy International Day of Play. Yes, I bet you weren't expecting that on the 11th of June. But still, maybe every day should be a play day after a fashion because let's face it, we all need to play, but especially children. And certainly with research from the charity Right to Play uh, suggesting that over half of us miss how much we used to play when we were younger. Uh, clearly there are messages to be had from this particular item. And so we're delighted to welcome to the programme from Right to Play UK, Gillian McMahon. How are you, Gillian? Great, thanks. Lovely to have to speak to you. Well, great to connect with your good self. And um, play is something that perhaps as the years go by, we tend to think we'd like to do, but we feel we can't do because obviously there are other things that get in the way. Is that a fair point? Um, yes, and I, I think particularly uh, children around the world often don't have the chance to play. So today is really important in recognising the importance of play. Yeah, and indeed, uh, looking at this particular uh, day, which was adopted by the United Nations in March, it's the very first international day of play, supported by more than 140 countries, led by a coalition of international organisations. Of course, inevitably, when we talk about the international scenario, we, one cannot help but be um, stressed, really, by what's happening in Ukraine, what's happening in Gaza, what's happening in so many parts of the world, Sudan, etc. Uh, I mean, clearly, we can't hope to, to solve that. But share with us why, in essence, the United Nations has actually come up with this International Day of Play. Yeah, so... Um Yes, the United Nations adopted this day of play in March and it's happening today and we are really delighted about that right to play has been working in this area for over 25 years and we've been campaigning for this day because we think it's really important to have a dedicated day which recognises the importance of play and it's really a unifying moment at the local, national, global levels to, to elevate the importance of play. Um, and really get a call for policies and training and funding to be integrated into play settings around the world. And um, Right to Play works with children in some of the most challenging contexts in the world and some of the contexts that you mentioned, um, where we are helping children recover from trauma, conflict and displacement, working with lots of refugee children, um, helping them recover through play. Um, and then we also work in education environments where we're helping children uh, access a quality education through play. Right to Play was founded in 2000. Uh, it helps vulnerable children, children, as you mentioned, who are affected by war, disease, climate change, violence, poverty, inequality, prejudice and exploitation. Just reading those uh, aspects, um, kind of was almost brought back to the era of the 19th century and Charles Dickens writing about workhouses and other sort of areas. I mean, here we are in the 21st century. Isn't it a bit depressing that as a species, we still actually tend to exploit our young? Um, yeah, it can be challenging. And, and, you know, and I think in the UK, play is kind of understood and um, the, the, the children, we're more used to children playing in the classroom. But in the context where we work, there can be cultural norms or societal pressures. Um, children might have to work or um, uh, help out at home. Um, and play is really seen as something that's a bit frivolous. Um, and so really what we're doing is, is really trying to give children that opportunity to play, give them a safe space. And um, and today, having today as a UN recognised day of play really recognises that importance and um, puts it kind of up the agenda on, at a global level. Are we talking about physical play or is play on a computer system just as uh, viable in certain ways as getting out and about playing rounders? Yeah, so uh, I think research shows that, that a mix of play is really what's important and, and that's what happens within our programmes. So uh, physical play, yes, is important. It really helps with motor skills and strength and, and overall health. Um, but we also have uh, games within our programmes that help children develop their emotional skills. So. Um, helping them to express their feelings, uh, particularly when they've been through a traumatic situation, um, develop empathy, it helps them build resilience. And you know, children playing in a team can build community. Um, and then also we have play in classroom settings, which can help with problem solving, creativity, critical thinking. So all different aspects of, of, of play uh, have all different types of benefit. And really that mix is just so important for children kind of blended play for uh, all elements with respect to that. Yes. Um, looking at, again, this first International Day of Play, do you see this as a regular annual event that we can schedule into June each year? 
Yes, absolutely. So today is the first uh, first time it's taking place, but it will be an annual day. And um, it's really a chance for us to celebrate the importance of play. And we'll be celebrating uh, in the UK, in schools in the UK, and also um, in our programmes around the world. So we reach over 5 million children every year. Um, and they we're having celebrations in, in all of our uh, countries where we work. And how did you become involved with Right to Play, Gillian, from your own point of view? Was it a case of, well, it sounds like an interesting charity, let's go for that? Um, yeah, so well, I've worked in international development throughout my whole career. And, um, you know, I've, I've worked, uh, it was actually about 10 years ago, I was in Liberia uh, working in an environment where children have, they're just really challenging circumstances and, you know, quite, quite hard um, environment for children. Um, and I came across Right to Play's programme because I, I heard children playing and having fun um, and it really caught my attention and, and, you know, just seeing how much it affected those uh, children's well-being and happiness um, in an environment which was, you know, just really difficult and, and worrying um, really inspired me to want to be involved. And um, and I've seen that more and more now that I've visited programmes in Ghana and Rwanda and Tanzania. I've seen how much it helps children have a better quality of life and, and reclaim their childhood. Yeah, right, to play also building resilience perhaps in terms of the challenges we're sometimes faced with. Yes. Um, Rightstoplay.org.uk, is that the best place to go to to find out further details about the International Day of Play? Yes, that's right. Thank you so much. We'd love people to find out more and get involved. Gillian McMahon from Rights to Play. Many thanks indeed and happy International Play Day. Thank you very much. <laughs>